All right. So thank you, thank you everyone. In this talk, uh, we'll discuss about how graph technologies can help fight uh, terrorist threats. My name is Sebastian Eman. I'm the CEO of Linkerius, and I'm with uh, Fred Kagan. Uh, Fred is a uh, director of the Critical Threat Project at the American Enterprise Institute. Linkerius uh, is a French company that provides uh, uh, graph, uh, graph visualization and analysis technology and is a long-standing partner of Neo4j. Uh, we, uh, we have created a graph intelligence platform uh, that speeds up the investigation of complex threats. We have notably helped uh, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalism to quickly reveal complex fraud schemes in the Panama Papers and the Paradise Papers. Today, investigators in large companies and government agencies use Linkerius to quickly reveal and investigate uh, frauds, money laundering activities, or cyber threats. And in this talk, Fred will uh, uh, discuss about how uh, the, his team combines Neo4j and Linkerius uh, to uh, uh, conduct intelligence analysis. Thank you, Sebastian. Critical Threats Project at the American Enterprise Institute, along with its sister organization, the Institute for the Study of War, form a single open source analytical team. We use unclassified information readily available on the internet to understand ongoing conflicts in the Middle East, Africa, and Europe to produce forecasts and policy recommendations. We are independent nonprofits that do not accept money from any government. Our primary areas of focus are Iran, Russia, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Afghanistan, and Northern Africa, particularly Libya and the Horn of Africa. We study the global Al-Qaeda and ISIS networks, as well as the Iranian network of allies and proxies operating throughout the Middle East. We are in the process of establishing a South Asia program. We publish our analysis and forecasts, as well as the results of planning exercises we regularly undertake to present options to American and allied policymakers. We are engaged in an effort to model a transformation in the way open source intelligence is generated and used that we call the intelligence revolution. We believe that an overall picture of what's going on in the world is best generated from unclassified information, with classified data used in a more targeted way to solve the problems that only it can. We also find that the division of labor between analysts and collectors necessary in the intelligence community is actually harmful in the open source world. So we have instead collector analysts, the same people gather the data who process and analyze it. Our platform is therefore a collection analysis platform controlling both functions. Our data comes in from many sources in many formats and structures. Like the intelligence community and almost any large scale business an analysis team, we have the problem of munging that data together into a single interface that lets analysts find everything of relevance with one search. Graph databases, and particularly Neo4j, are the optimal systems for such a problem. They require no schema or ontology, and so can readily accept data in any structure. Neo4j's label system permits the creation of multiple overlapping ontologies coexisting peacefully within a single database without compromising search performance. So we do not need to transform each new data source into some pre-existing data model in order to use it. We can simply bring it into our Neo4j database and adjust only our graphical user interface and make minor modifications and query structures in order to begin using it immediately. There is no need to re-index our large data set every time we add a new data field or entire sub-ontology as one must do with SQL databases. These capabilities make the hard problem of interacting with many different data formats and structures relatively easy and painless to resolve. Despite the advantages of using Neo4j to make all of our data readily accessible, we still face the challenge of making it quite literally visible to the user. Our team of 40 plus analysts and interns is constantly creating events, entities, and relationships from the unstructured data they collect. Analysts must be able to visualize the data dynamically and historically to see patterns and derive insight. Insight comes from the intersection of node link and geospatial analysis. 
we build pictures of the states, militaries, and non-state actor organizations of interest and overlay those pictures on geolocated events, often kinetic events, to discern the capabilities and, most importantly, intentions of those states and groups. Discerning intent is what permits intelligent forecasting and is one of the hardest analytical tasks. It requires not only the study of the events and organizations themselves at this moment, but also of the context within which the humans in those organizations have developed and evolved. Our nodes have therefore become very extensive with many properties added over the years by successive generations of analysts. We must be able to place nodes in a node link graph, show them on maps, and also access those properties. Our extensive data set covers many states and regions, so we must also be able to gather subsets of the data and visualize them quickly and dynamically as part of our quest to understand, evaluate, and forecast. The backbone of our system is a Neo4j database supplemented by a cloud search index and document stores on AWS and Azure. Our team interacts with the data via a purpose-built Python script that is meant to be the single graphical user interface optimized for their workflow. We need, therefore, a visualization system that is optimized for integration with Neo4j, produces attractive and publishable graphics, and can display node link graphs, geolocated data, and detailed property, property nodes easily and dynamically. It must be able to perform various auto layouts, let users color nodes and display icons, and update from the live data set as required. All these features must be accessible via API calls from the Python script itself so that the visualization is integrated as seamlessly as possible into the analytical workflow. The visualization, in other words, must perform more like another window of the GUI than like a distinct software package. We have studied the reasons for the success and failure of integrating new software into analytical workflows in our own teams and in the US intelligence community. We have learned the importance of designing the software tools to match existing workflows as precisely as possible. When the tools permit or require changing the workflows, we have observed that it is essential for the software engineers to work with the analysts directly to help them adjust their workflows. Simply plopping a new tool into an existing workflow frequently results in the failure of users to take advantage of the tool, and then they remain stuck in the rut of their pre-existing workflow. That is why APIs are so important to us. Our ugly, because I wrote it, but purpose-built GUI is optimized for our workflow. We have found that it is much better to add functionality via that GUI than to require users to learn how to use multiple new tools. That is why we require not merely a powerful software package, but one whose power is readily accessible through an API. Neo4j's ontological flexibility does, does more than allow us to munge data. It also supports a highly articulated data schema that allows us to retain sourcing and data provenance at the property level. We use what we call a thin node model, whereby the main entity or event node has only a few properties on it, a UID, name, type, and perhaps one or two others. And most of the other properties, things like age, geolocation, rank, descriptions, quotations, etc., are stored on distinct Neo4j nodes with a property label linked to the main node. This arrangement makes it possible not only to link each property directly to the source or sources from which it was derived and to the users who created or edited it, but also to control how much data moves from the Neo4j server to the user interface, improving performance. The downside of this structure is that it does not fit neatly into the normal approach to visualizing graph data. We have therefore adopted the following model to allow us to take full advantage of the capabilities Lincurious provides to visualize our complicated data schema. The Python script draws data from the canonical database and restructures it to optimize for visualization, putting the restructured data in a sandbox Neo database distinct from our canonical database. Each user accesses that visualization sandbox via a Lincurious interface. The script updates the sandbox database as required and also uses the Lincurious REST API to create, change, and display visualizations, including coloring nodes. By accessing Lincurious through a browser controlled by the Python script, we can refresh the browser automatically to display changes in the visualization, creating a user experience that is seamless. Our users interact directly with a single GUI, our script, and see the visualized results of their efforts in what appears simply to be a separate window of that GUI, but is actually Lincurious. We thus find a good balance between performance and sourcing on the one hand and visualization on the other. 
We have published the results of our analysis using Lincurious, notably depicting the insanely complicated and overlapping relationships among individuals and groups in the Salafi Jihadi network in the Sahel region of Africa. We use Lincurious visualizations in many internal products as well, including weekly intelligence roll-ups and specific warning intelligence products. This graphic was produced by an intern studying the Salafi Jihadi groups in the Sahel. Much discussion of the counterterrorism problem at the time attempted to map the ISIS Al-Qaeda division visible in Syria and Iraq to Salafi Jihadi networks elsewhere. As we built up and examined the evolution of the Salafi Jihadi groups in Africa over time, however, it became apparent that the ISIS Al-Qaeda distinction is much less important in that region. We saw instead a complex set of overlapping human networks that changed their branding periodically, but rarely changed their actual relationships with one another. Those human networks included not only the Salafi Jihadi leadership and the groups that followed individual leaders, but also tribal and ethnic groupings that formed common bonds and connections through which Salafi Jihadi control and influence spreads. This graphic was generated dynamically from our database and then touched up by the intern to make it more easy to interpret visually. It was built on live data, however, and could be updated dynamically as more data is ingested or changed. We published this graphic in an article that was part of our larger effort to change the way U.S. policymakers think about the Salafi Jihadi problem in Africa. Our experiences with different kinds of databases led us to the conclusion that graph databases like Neo4j must become core backbones for analytical organizations within the government and beyond it. The difficulties of integrating many heterogeneously structured data sets common to almost every analytical team and the need to adapt and adjust ontologies and schemas dynamically in order to incorporate new tools and data both militate for the schemaless Neo4j approach. The performance costs of restructuring and re-indexing SQL type databases are just too high in our view to allow those kinds of systems to form the basis of analytical databases moving forward. SQL type databases and other data systems will continue to outperform graph, graph databases in certain functions, leading to the requirement for a data layer comprised of multiple different types of databases rather than a single database itself. But graph databases are, and in our view will remain, the optimal means to integrate that data layer and make it easily accessible to the end user. Graph analysis and visualization platforms also help us easily find hidden pieces of information within large graphs faster. Investigations are a continual interactive process, and Lincurious is a key to empowering our analysts. Dynamic and real-time network visualization helps them visualize uh, connections in the data to better understand and analyze complex situations. It also means that they can focus on being excellent at both collection and analysis without losing time because of any technical limitation. At the end of the day, analysts can better exploit their data to generate high-value insights. Do we have time for any questions? So um, you, you said that the data collection slash analyst uh, individuals, they either manually input <coughs> data into the graph. Have you explored automated approaches, whether it's NLP or whatever, to populate the graph? Many. Um, we have not yet found an entity extraction tool that is reliable enough um, simply to bring extracted data into our data set, particularly because we're working in a lot of native languages. So although there are some very good tools and we've integrated some of them um, in English, when you get into Farsi, you're, there's nothing. So we are working on combinations and basically our model here is going to be human on the loop, um, wherein the uh, entity extraction tees up possibilities and looks into the Neo data set and finds possible matches and allows the analyst ultimately to go yes, no, yes, no on a bunch of possible links. Um, and conceivably, and this is something that I'm also thinking about, because of the way that we can have different ontologies in NEO, I'm thinking that we may start to bring in automated stuff marked as such and give people the opportunity to look at it or not look at it. Um, but we're not anywhere near going to a sort of a full automation. I just haven't seen the algorithms that would be reliable enough. So you've broken your model into multiple nodes, uh, from which then you create this secondary model, uh, 
uh, where liquor is, is sourcing from. If you had to redo it again, would you do it the same way? Again? Yes, I'm actually very, very confident that the thin node model is the right model. Um, I think that it's, first of all, we're not the only people who are doing that, and I think that the, the graph visualization industry will probably move in the direction, ultimately, of making it easier um, in visualization tools to uh, bring these things back together again. Um, but from a performance standpoint, and, from the, and the key thing is from a data provenance and user origination standpoint, What's the alternative? The alternative would be that I would have to have properties on the node, and each property would have to have some ID, and it would be an incredibly painful and I think extremely non-performant um, process to be able to link to you know find all of the things that a given user ent uh, edited. Uh, why would you have to do that? Well, sometimes the work of a given user comes into question, and you have to audit everything that a given user has done or touched, right, and be able to look at that. I am confident that this is a good model, and I think that, frankly, it's not even that painful um, to make the transposition as we're, as we're doing it. And, and how often do you then convert into a merged uh, node or merged graph, right? You, know, you said as, as you, know, you mentioned it, as needed, but... For the visualization? Yeah. yeah constantly. Constantly. Yeah. Is that more like a, in, a, in, a, in a string fashion or like, you know, the daily thing? Oh, no, no, it's, it's, it is in, as a user creates a new node or connection, the script automatically also translates that into a visualized node and makes it appear, so it's absolutely seamless to the user and real time. So did your analysts learn Cypher, or do you have an administrator this? That would be me. Um, and no, my analysts don't know Cypher, and they never interact with the Neo database except through the GUI. Um, it's not because of any hesitation about um, their ability to learn Cypher, which is pretty straightforward. But we have a single canonical database, and the, all of the work is done in that database. And so we manage the quality assurance, quality control function, QAQC, by marking things as sort of temporary until they have gone through a QAQC process and they're removing the labels. Were I to allow people into the database, they would be acting on live data. Probably two thirds of our analysts are interns. <laughs> I would never do that, but that's the but that's the that's the reason. Um, have you um, implemented any of the uh, centrality measures that Neo4j offers? Uh, have not. Okay. We, we have not. Our data. Um, I, I, the, I have various problems with the with applying sort of social network analysis to incomplete networks as a theoretical matter, and that's why we don't do that. Yeah, yeah. We out of time? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.